Hi, hello, I'm Liz and you are on Astara Studios YouTube channel. This is just a fun little video. I kind of want to play around with this idea of doing like how to lists, but this isn't like how to, it's just my advice, 22 business tips for 2022. Now it might be a little bit late. It's not in January that I'm filming even this video. I was more inspired by the palindrome date of the 22nd of February and I thought hey 22 tips for 2022 would make for a good video. So let's jump into it because I think this might be a longish video with 22 tips. The first tip is to create a strategy for your business in January of each year. Now, I believe that strategies should be relooked often because I feel we're like fluid flowing businesses and we should be able to revisit our strategies. But while the energy of the year is fresh and we all have this kind of revitalized energy, have a look at your strategy for your business. So if you haven't done so already, we're still kind of in that new year energy. So get into it, have a look at your strategy or revisit it and see if you want to change or adapt anything about your vision for the next few months. So this tip might be a little bit controversial because I know like a lot of people love working in messy spaces, but I feel that your outside world is often a reflection of what's going inside. So to kind of reverse that effect, working from the outside in, make sure that your workspace is neat and tidy. Keep it nice and tidy, keep it organized. So how you'd like to feel on the inside, try and make your space represent that. Now, I'm also in a space where I'm considering re-looking my office space just to make it whether it's tidy or more like how I want to have my business to be. So I want to paint some walls, I want to put up um, a whiteboard or a blackboard. So yes, yeah, so I'll be doing this with you. Let me know if you want to see a video on me doing that as well for the channel. The next one is probably even more controversial. So keep your workspace separate from your home space if you're working in your home space. So I actually got this tip from another colleague of mine who's suggested, and I've always believed this and I've kind of subconsciously always done it, but keep your spaces separate from your home space. So make sure that you can have a space that's separate from your like home relaxing space specifically, because it can be very easy to fall into that trap of working a nine to five ends up being working a nine to 11 at night uh, because there's no separation between your relaxing space and your productivity space as such. So the next tip, I'd really like to do this myself and this is something I'm trying to attempt this year specifically, is read one book a month for your business. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a business book. How I see, it's a book that inspires you to do the work that you love. So if that is for your case, like reading a nonfiction that's just generally inspiring, but not about necessarily business, then do that. If it's a fiction book that just really gives you more energy and creativity, do that. But it's almost a way of getting inspired that goes beyond our normal comforts, like not being inspired from social media or Netflix, but going out of our way and looking for something specifically to read that inspires us. And the way I'm going to do this, this is another little tip, but it's not part of the list tips, is to try and listen to more audiobooks while I do work, perhaps like admin or design work that doesn't need um, me to like concentrate quite heavily necessarily. The next tip is related to your PR strategy. Try and book one speaking opportunity in the month. So whether it's through someone else where you're telling other people that you're speaking about your business or whether it's just you creating like a little webinar or going on Facebook Live. So try and speak publicly once every single month. The next tip is a little bit more of a very practical business tip that I wasn't doing in the beginning of my business, 
but know how many clients you need per month to meet your profit and income goals. And that will give you an indication of what you can work towards for your business. So if you're not meeting that goal right now, then you know what you can implement to try and meet that goal, profit and income wise. Be authentic. Don't try and copy anyone else. Your clients likely come to you because they're attracted to you, not to the person that you're trying to be. And I know it takes time to get to a level a level of comfortability for that authenticity to take over. And not all situations will be comfortable. But aim to just love yourself, accept yourself, and be yourself within your business. Others will pick up on that energy and that will really make an impact on your business in the long run. Know your target audience. I see so many leads and clients struggle with this that they think they know their audience, but they don't really, or they haven't actually created a kind of target audience profile that they can use within their business to support the content that they create. So make sure that when you're knowing your audience, that you're really listening, you're really taking the time to listen to your leads, to your clients, to understand what their needs are, do your due diligence, do some research, uh, go and collect surveys to see what your, your audience needs. And sometimes it's not going to be as straightforward like a survey. Sometimes it will come from interacting with clients to, over a long period of time to really gauge, to be able to know your clients and what they need. The next step, don't make assumptions. It is so easy to make assumptions as an entrepreneur because we're by ourselves most of the times and assumptions happen, assumptions for instance about why a project quote wasn't uh, signed off on uh, or why you didn't get the job you really wanted. So don't make assumptions. Don't worry about things that really don't actually need to affect your day to day. Making assumptions can hurt your business and it can hurt your personal well-being. So rather opt for knowing really what's happening or choosing not to get caught up into the assumptions that you might have of something. Follow your gut instinct, follow your intuition at times. I believe in following heart and mind. So where mind might be the more research, evidence stuff that really provides like data and a foundation, a physical foundation for a lot of our things in our businesses, Sometimes we just have to listen to our instincts and what our instincts are telling us about specific situations. Make sure you have a strong support system. So a support system can be friends and family, but friends and family might not always understand what we're going through. So my recommendation is that build a strong support system with your clients and your colleagues as well. So if you don't have that privilege of relying on friends or family, you can learn to collaborate. Those are people that are in it as well for similar reasons possibly. So having people support you that understand what you're going through can be really important. And there's different levels of support. So friends as well, you can rely on friends for friendship, right? They don't have to be the business support element of your business. So you can consider different levels of support that you can have for yourself that will get you through difficult periods in your business. I really believe in this as well. So build a support system for your clients. I really feel that that can be missed in the customer experience side of things. Build a community, build a support system for them that you also can later on utilize when you're growing your business that they, there's not just reliance on you, but reliance on a community. I think that can be really key in a business if you've got a community like that. Believe in yourself. In days that it gets hard, you need to know that your belief, it's unfaltering. It's no one else's responsibility but yours to believe in your dream because it's your dream and no one else's. So make sure that you 
have maybe like a sheet of affirmations or a sheet of beliefs about your dream so that when there's days that you aren't feeling too well, that you can actually rely on that and look at that as a reminder of your dream and the impact you're making with it. The next one, also to get you through those difficult days, is to know your why. So when there are the difficult days and you maybe don't believe so much in yourself, your why, your reason, your purpose for creating this business will carry you through to the next day. So remember your why and ideally put it up somewhere on a wall in your office space so that you have a constant reminder of your why. To-do lists. I'm a big fan of to-do lists, sometimes to the point where it isn't always that healthy for me, so I'm learning a better balance with it. But to-do lists can really help you to clarify, to give you direction, and there's two recommendations for you. So, well, three actually. Start like I did and just write lists down in a notebook. That can be one way. The second thing is to use a software like ClickUp or Asana to keep track of tasks, so a task list. Or you can get a planner, a planner that plans out your day and that you can write task lists or to-do lists in. I've got a great planner available on Amazon. I'll link it in the description box below if you want to have a look at that. It's a planner specifically for entrepreneurs. Don't get too caught up in to-do lists. Now, I know this sounds contradictory to what I mentioned. Yes, to-do lists can be really great to hold you accountable, to keep you organized and provide direction. But I'm also trying to reach a type of balance with that. I want to, if I'm not checking off everything on my list, that's okay. It's not the end of the world. I can shift it on to another day. Also, don't write out lists that you can't actually accomplish in a day. Make sure that you're listing a, an accomplishable amount uh, every day. So at one point I was writing down 30 things to do in a day and it's just not possible so don't make things harder for yourself. What I rather do, and it's also present in the planner that I mentioned, is that there's a section for your to-do checkboxes, but there's also bonus checkboxes. It's nice if you are able to check off a bonus, but it's not a necessity. Whereas the task might be more the priorities for that specific day. Have an accountability buddy. This has taken me years to really understand why this is necessary. It's a business bestie, someone that knows what you're going through, so it's not necessarily the support system, but someone that can hold you accountable and that you can also hold accountable for in their business. Get a mentor. If you're in a position where you really need some mentorship, a mentor can really help you in your business and provide a little bit of oversight, accountability, and overall guidance. Next tip, get a coach. So note what the difference is between having a mentor and having a coach. A, co a coach is someone who will really help you more intensely throughout your journey. So they'll get more deeply involved. A mentor provides more oversight. And remember, psychologists have psychologists that they go to. There's nothing wrong with that. Coaches have coaches that they go to. So this, if you have a barrier against that, think about it in that way. You need a support system and that's what a coach or mentor is for. Be a mentor. So if you are in a point of your business where you are ready to be a mentor for someone else, I believe that's how mentorship works, right? Someone offers to be a mentor to a mentee, but when the mentee gets to the point, pay it forward, become a mentor for someone else. That's how we can like continue this journey of supporting each other through mentorship. Price your services with intention. Specifically when you're looking at that strategy part that I mentioned earlier, pricing adapts and changes. So when last have you actually looked at your pricing? Have you worked out the cost of doing business? Have you worked out what it needs to take for you to provide a profitable income? More so, does it give you guidance on how to reach a specific lifestyle that you might want to reach? Your business can only be profitable and grow if your pricing is right. 
understand value versus worth. Know that you are worthy just by existing. You don't need to tick off 10 to-dos every single day. You are already worthy. Work on yourself. Invest in yourself. If you are healthy, your business will be healthy. So personal development is really key when it comes to running a healthy, good business. Most importantly, have fun. There's no point in starting a business, doing all the work that's necessary to make our dreams come true if it doesn't spark joy or passion in our life. And I know it's not going to always be a joyride, but at the same time, it needs to really have meaning in your life. It needs to spark something in you. Uh, otherwise, what's the point? Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that these tips were really valuable and helpful to you. If you want to see more videos like this, like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate your support in growing this channel. I hope you have a stunning day and I look forward to connecting with you in the comments and on the next video. Bye-bye.